Welcome to the latest episode of Love Ultras. This is episode seven. Uh, the West Harland Way race is four weeks on Saturday. So it's getting pretty close now to the, uh, to the business end of things. So I thought for this episode, I would just uh, talk about my top tips for the West Harland Way race. This will be the seventh time I've done the race. It will be my 41st Ultra over the last uh, 11 years. And I've been involved in the West Harland Way race since 2007, either running it or as part of the West Harland Way race committee. So I suppose I feel as though I've um, I've learned some mistakes and I've uh, uh, made some uh, got some things right and some things wrong. And so I thought I'd uh, just share my top five tips. Um, I've had uh, two uh, two races under 20 hours. My best being 19 hours 51, 59 in 2009 that I'm very proud of. Um, but I've also had some tough ones in 2011. It took me over 27 and a half hours. I had a real battle to get to the finish, but uh, just about made it. And the last one I did was 2013, which was 21, 26. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how I get on this year. But anyway, this is my uh, top five tips uh, with four weeks to go. The first tip I would say is aim to get to the start line refreshed and ready to run. I think that's a key thing over these next four weeks. Um, you you're not going to improve your fitness a great deal, but you can very easily damage and make it more difficult to do well in the race. Um, my plan is this weekend I want to try and do a, a recce on the Ring of Fire course that I'm in Anglesey that I'm doing in September. So I'm going down on Friday and we'll run hopefully sort of 15, 20 miles on Friday, 35 on Saturday and 20 on Sunday. And that's going to be a dual purpose. One is to uh, recce the course, uh, this, uh, the second half of each day, it's 130 miles altogether and I'll do about 70 odd. Um, but also it will be my last big week before the West Harland Way. Then I'll have an easy week and then a sort of a medium-ish week where I'll go, I'll do a Ben Lohman run and we'll run on the braids at the weekend and then two weeks of just running very easy every other day. <clears throat> and my aim is to try and get to the start line feeling ready and refreshed and ready to go. I've not always got this right. In 2010, I tried to do things a bit different. I'd had a couple of good West Harland Way races in 08 and 09. And then I thought I'd do something a bit different. So I decided to do some more races. So I did the Hardmores 55 in March. I did the Fling in April and I did the Catherine in May. And then I remember doing a, a 20 mile run about two weeks before the West Harland Way as my last long run. And I knew my legs were just so heavy. And I got to the start line and I knew I wasn't in great shape. And um, right from the word go, it was hard to sort of keep up with the pace and to, and to do well. And I remember struggling and then uh, getting to Bridge of Orkey and things starting to fall apart a little bit. I'll come back and mention that in a moment. But um, I think that year I just did too much and I learned a big lesson. And from then onwards, I've always tried to make sure that two, three weeks before a big race, I try and sort of just run. For me, I try and run every other day, just nice and easy, and just try and let the little niggles settle down. And I want to get to the start line, ready to run, and really looking forward to it. So that would be my first uh, top tip. Make, try and get to the start line, refreshed, and ready to run. Don't do anything silly over the next four weeks try and make sure you get in a sense get there slightly undercooked rather than overcooked so you're ready to go I could it is a, a long way and it's a big challenge my second top tip will be to try and plan your Friday carefully and um, again it's I think one of the challenges of this race is that it does start at one in the morning which is not easy let's face it uh, it means probably that you've been up uh, since uh, since the the Friday morning. You've been up all day, and um, uh, if at all possible, try and take the day off work. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that, so it means that I can just get my stuff ready on the Friday morning, 
and then just make sure everything's sorted and then try and get a bit of a sleep in the afternoon and then go down to the start and hopefully uh, feel ready to, to go. I know those who have to work, it is a bit harder, um, but if at all possible, once you finish work, try and get some rest um, before, the, uh, before you have to go down to Mulgai and for the start of the race. And I think one of the things with that is making sure that you've got all your gear prepared well in advance. Uh, don't leave it till this Friday morning to spend that morning going to the shops and buying all the things that you need and sorting out your bags and everything. I think if you can get all that done early on in the week, it means then that you can just use Friday to chill out and relax and be able to get ready for the race. And also with that Friday, at registration, try and make sure that you don't waste too much energy. Uh, again, my very first one in 2007, I was just so excited to be there. I was looking forward to it. I've been on training runs with different people and I spent the hour and a half or so on my feet talking to people, chatting about the race, being really excited about, uh, about starting and it didn't help me. Uh, and it meant that I wasted a lot of my energy even before the race started. The next year I remember making sure that I registered and then I just sat down somewhere and I, I remember someone saying to me you look uh, very chilled out this time <laughs> uh, and I think I, I replied yeah I know how much it's going to hurt this time <laughs> um, but I was keen just to make sure I didn't waste too much energy by standing around an hour or so before the race. You're going to be on your feet for a long time so try and take advantage of the fact that you can sit down for a bit and not have to uh, walk around and chat to people. So that Friday uh, before the race try and make sure you use it well, prepare beforehand, get all your gear sorted out and make sure that you don't waste too much energy when you get to registration and before the race starts. Top tip number three would be to have a plan but be flexible. Now I've heard a lot of people say they have a plan and it's never going to be, you're never going to fulfill it. It's the first, what is it, something about the first sign of the enemy, it falls apart. Um, I can honestly say that I've had some races that have gone to plan. Uh, they've been great. I've worked, I've been I've prepared well, I've been fit, I've uh, got my, uh, my nutrition right. And basically, I, I kept to my plan right from the start, right to the finish. Okay, probably had a few low points along the way, but basically, the plan that I had worked. And I think if I think it, it can work like that. So I think it's worth having a plan personally, uh, with some idea of where you want to be at each checkpoint, with an idea of your overall time, and then work backwards from that. I know some people love just to run by feel completely and they never even plan at all. Great, that's fine. Um, but personally, I like to have a plan and I suppose I go over the top a little bit with all my little mini splits and uh, having it all worked out. But that suits me and uh, I, I quite I enjoy that. But I think it is good to have a plan, to at least have something to aim for. But I think you need to be flexible and I think you need to be willing to, if things aren't going right, to change that plan. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, in your mind when you're, when I'm out running often I think about different alternatives, different, be flexible. So if things aren't going so well, I've already thought about how I might change things and what I might do. Uh, and I think you need to be willing to, th to, to think on your feet. So if you get to Rawadanan, if you get to Orkdatia and things are, are falling apart, you need to think right what can I do to change this and to do something. I mentioned 2010 just before and then um, that was a great example for me. I'd, I'd sort of chased in 20 hours again that I'd done the previous two years but as I said I, I, my legs were heavy before I started and it wasn't going to happen and but I kept battling on and I was falling a little bit behind the time by my, my schedule for sub 20 and by the time I got to walk to tear it was pretty clear that I wasn't going to make that. Um, and then I had a terrible battle from uh, a member from Tyndrum to Bridge of Orkey and there's sections there which normally I would run most of it and I was having to walk and run and I was just starting to really labour and I remember the climbing up and you could climb up to that bit where the old railway station used to be and you go over the stile and then down and uh, I remember thinking I'm in trouble here this this you know, it was 35 miles to go from Bridge of Orkney. I'm about two miles away from there. 
I had plenty of time and so I knew I could finish but it wasn't going to be very pretty and um, I remember as I was running along that was the, the year England were playing in the World Cup in South Africa <clears throat> and on the Friday before the race I'd watched the game against Algeria and England had drawn nil-nil and Sven Goring Eriksson was the manager and I remember halfway through the second half he didn't change anything he just assumed something was going to go right in the end and they were going to score and he didn't do anything about Ever uh, Everton, England's play um, and I, as I sort of came into Bridge of Orkey I thought right I need to do something here I need to change something it's, this is not working I'm struggling I need to maybe change my shoes I need to have a longer stop I need to eat something different I just need to do something to try and get things going and I remember I came in and normally I like to be in and out of checkpoints within two, three minutes, five minutes at the very maximum. Uh, I like to be in and out. And I said to my support team, I need to stop for a while. I'm going to change my shoes. I said I'd love a hot chocolate, which I don't know at that stage I don't normally take. So one of them went up to the hotel and my friend Chris was there. It wasn't part of my support team, but Chris is very proactive with things. And he said, right, John, you need to have something. John, you need to have something to eat. Do you like olives? I've got olives here. Oh, no, I hate olives. I've got some ham. Do you want to try some ham? Now, I've never, ever eaten ham on a, on a run before. And I always like to sort of make sure I test everything out, my gear, my food. But I thought, yeah, I'll have some ham. <laughs> so I took some ham. And he gave me something else as well, I think, to eat, which I, I ate. And I had this hot chocolate. Um, and I stayed there I think for a good 20-25 minutes which as I said is unheard of for me really in the West Harlem way uh, and I changed my shoes which I, again I don't normally do um, but I tried something different and I just thought I need to, ha I've had my plan but my plan was falling apart so I needed to do something else and to be a bit more flexible and the next, I got going again and the next section from Vigiwoki to Glencoe was still pretty tough I, was, I wasn't really moving that well. But from Glencoe onwards, my friend David uh, came with me and I got going again. And uh, I actually ran from Glencoe to the end pretty well in a similar time to the previous years when I'd done my sub 20s. And I finished 22 hours 15 in the end, which again, I was really pleased with. Um, but I had a plan, but I wanted to, I needed to be flexible. So my top tip number three would be to have a plan, but be flexible. And that's where your support team can be really valuable as well because there's times when I think as a runner you get so tired and you're not thinking straight about things, not making good decisions. So if you've got a, support, a good support team that can make those decisions for you, if they see that you're not eating, you're not drinking, to try and get something inside you that will help you, uh, all those things will help. So have a plan, but be flexible. Top tip number four would be to prepare for tough times. Now, it might be that you run the whole West Harlem Way, or I'll run it this year without any tough times. And again, I've had the odd race <laughs> where I haven't really had too many tough times, but they're probably more the sort of fling distance and below, um, rather than the 95 miles and above distance. I think any time you run over 20 hours, over 25 hours, you're gonna have some tough times and you're going to have a difficult, uh, a difficult um, stages. Hopefully you'll get through them. But I think it's good to try and prepare for those. And one of the, key, one of the things for me that I do when it's tough is just try and uh, get my mind out of things uh, to be able to sort of try and think about or get, not think about how, how it's hurting or how far to go or everything. And one of the best things that I do is count. <laughs> Uh, I do a lot of counting when things aren't going so well. So I'll count 50 breaths uh, and I'll try and run for 50 breaths and maybe walk for 20 or the other way around if I'm really struggling where I'll run for 20 and walk for 50. Um, sometimes I'll, I like doing little rhythms. So I'll go one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> and keep adding two on each time, or go, go the other way, start at 20, and then come, go to 18, then 16, uh, anything really, just to sort of uh, try and take my mind away from the fact that I've still got a long way to go, and things are hurting. And um, Sometimes if I'm going up, I'll just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and just count my paces. 
other times I go left, right, left, right, left, uh, left, right, left, right, left, and whatever, and just try and anything to sort of just get into a rhythm and try and get away from the fact that things are starting to hurt. Um, and so I think it's quite good to to uh, to prepare for those tough times, to know that they are going to come. And I think one of the other things that uh, has really helped me is just to, sometimes just thinking about why I'm doing it. Um, Katrina often says to me when things are, go, are going tough, she said, you paid to do this, you're supposed to be enjoying it, so just get on with it. And I think I try and do that. If things are, are tough, I say, well, I've prepared for this. I've been looking forward to this so much. And now I'm here. I'm not going to give it up. I'm going to try and keep it going. So to try and, in my mind, be ready for those tough times with some thoughts and some ideas. And I think the other thing which motivates me when, when, I, when I go to tough times is knowing the elation of what it's like to finish. I would say pretty well the majority of ultras that I've, I've finished, uh, I've, um, I've had a tear in my eye as I come into the finish because I know I've achieved what I wanted to do. And um, at the moment I've never had a DNF and that's one of the things which really motivates me to keep going. I don't really, I've had some close, close calls where I've wanted to stop and things have been really, really hard, but I've somehow dug it out and been able to, to finish. And I think that the prize given for the West Harlem Way is such an amazing occasion. Um, there's all the runners there and all their friends and family. Everyone in that room understands what it takes to run 95 miles. I think when you go to work and you say to people you've run 95 miles and whatever time it is, they've got no idea whether that's good or bad. They just they just think you're crazy. Whereas in that room, in that prize giving, everybody knows what it's like. And the, the feeling of having your name called out by Ian Beattie and being able to walk, hobble, crawl to the front and get your goblet and uh, be able to milk the applause that they're, they're, cl they're clapping for you is an amazing feeling. And I think that is something which just keeps me going. I know that one, that took me 27 and a half hours. I was just determined to finish, even though it was a lot, lot longer than any of the other races I've done. I, the finish meant a lot to me. And sometimes people say, well, if you've got two or three goblets, it, you know, and things aren't going well, the temptation's to stop. But I can honestly say that's not been that, it's not been true for me because um, I know how much each one means and each one means a lot to me. And uh, I don't want to sort of give up on that. So prepare for the tough times because they will come. If they don't, great, then just ride with it and, in, and uh, keep going. But I think for the majority of us, there will be some tough times. But you, once you've done a few of these, you know that the, the tough times don't last. And so again, that helps you to think, right, I'm gonna get through this. And that's why for me, the counting helps um, because it means I just can get through that low point and then get going again. I also like a lot of mantras. So my favorite one is slow and steady, make it last. So if I get into a good phase, I just try and instead of pushing on, I just try and ease off a little bit, but run as far as I can with that mantra. Um, another one that I've started using is I went to a seminar of like a guy called Jack Black and he talked about the power of positive thinking and stuff. But he talked about um, how that your mind, if you're thinking negative thoughts, it affects you physically. So sometimes when I'm going through a tough bit, I just repeat to myself, you are strong, you are fit, you are running well. <laughs> and just try and sort of just put lots of positive thoughts into my head. And again, sometimes it helps. So that was, but that's something which I practiced and got ready for uh, when those tough times do come. And then my um, fifth top, top tip would be to try and enjoy the whole experience. I can't promise you that you will enjoy every mile because I think that's pretty impossible because there will be some, some tough bits. But if you can basically have a, a positive out, outlook about the whole race, I think it makes a massive difference. And if you can try and enjoy it and try and have that sense of um, enjoyment of what you're doing, I think it really helps. I remember one West Harlem way when I'd, uh, I got down to Balmahar and then I was going along the, the lock side and I was starting to struggle a bit and uh, I think it was one of the years where I was chasing my sub 20, in fact I think it was, it was the 2009, so I'd done it in 2008 and I wanted to see if I could do it again and I was starting to struggle after about 20 miles, 21 miles. 
uh, I think it, looking back it was probably that time when your body starts to switch from uh, from uh, more carbohydrates to, to fats possibly that was part of it as well I don't know um, but I remember thinking I've got 75, 70 miles to go and I'm starting to find this hard this is not good and my friend Jay had been to America and he was a bit jet lagged I think and he was up this was probably about four in the morning by now half four and he sent me a text and um, Jay was a Christian like I am and he said uh, uh, John enjoy God's creation and uh, it was funny it was just that word enjoy that just really kick-started the, the rest of my race and I remember thinking yeah I've, I'm here to enjoy this I've been preparing for this I've worked hard I've been out in all sorts of weather preparing and doing these long runs so enjoy it and it's funny because that one thought just got me going again and helped me uh, all the way through the rest the rest of the race and so I think if you can try and enjoy the experience uh, enjoy being part of this amazing race the fellow runners around you are brilliant and you can chat with them and gain strength from them your support crew all the all the marshals all the people in the checkpoints everyone wants to help you to enjoy it and to get to the end so take from that uh, I get a lot of uh, strength I think from um, seeing people and whether they're supporting someone else or not it doesn't really matter the fact that they acknowledge and uh, and say well done makes a big difference. I remember going up the Rannoch Moor once and there was a group of Americans that were walking the West Highland Way the opposite way. So by the time they got to me, they'd, you know, there'd been a few runners past and they'd found out what we were doing. And they were just incredible. They were, uh, oh, you're doing awesome and lots of positive encouragements. And it came just at a good time uh, to be able to, to help me to get back into that positive mind and that enjoyment. So I hope they helps. I'm sure there's lots of other tips I could give, but they're my five top tips to try and get to the start, refreshed as possible. Make sure you use the Friday uh, as carefully as you can. Have a plan, but be flexible. Prepare for tough times and try and enjoy the whole experience. So if you're doing the race this year, I look forward to seeing you on the trail.